Former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton finally speaking out about the email controversy that's causing a stir. Today in a news conference, Clinton said that she had no reason to save personal emails during her time as Secretary of State. She also told the gathered media at the UN that she used one email address out of personal convenience. And then former Secretary of State John Kerry did the same thing during his tenure with the State Department current Secretary of State John Kerry. All right, now we want to uh, get your thoughts on the Clinton email controversy, whether you think it's a controversy at all, or if you do, what the concern is for you. Give us a call. The number's on your screen. It's 888-766-2428. We're going to start in New York with Cynthia. Cynthia, thanks for calling in. What do you think? What's your take on all of this? And do you think it's a problem for Hillary? No, Richard, hi. I, I do not think this is going to be a problem for former uh, Secretary of State uh, Hillary Clinton. And the reason being that is because during the time that these emails uh, were made, it was not, had not been put into law that it was a requirement by law that she was to have a separate account. So I think that for that reason by itself, it's going to be smoothed over. And then also to add, I believe that she was very professional, carried herself very well, answered the questions in a very potential presidential manner. Cynthia, I, I'm, I think I agree with you that it's probably not illegal what she did. It might have been a violation of regulations. But are you concerned at all that she's the one who gets to decide what we get to see or what the State Department gets to see as opposed to the usual process where all of the emails go through the State Department? Well, no, I, I don't, you know, I don't believe that Senator, uh, that former Secretary of State would violate any rules or regulations uh, or laws for that matter, uh, Richard. Um, she's very intelligent. She has a, her educational level is stands in, in etiquette, etiquette, I should say. But let, let me ask you a question here and just follow up. I understand that it sounds like you're supportive of Mrs. Clinton or you believe that this doesn't amount to anything, but do you think that this is giving her critics a lot of ammunition? Well, of course. I mean, of course, because, you know, first of all, let's be real about it. Any, anything that, you know, we women do, we got to be beat up about. So that's the first thing that we need to deal with as well. But you know, I'm going to tell you this. She can handle herself. And I'm very, I'm very proud of her. I support her. And I believe that she will be the next president of this United States. All right, Cynthia, thank you very much for the call. You know, Andrew, I do want to say that the caller, Cynthia, she is right about that. Whether you like Hillary Clinton or not, she does know how to handle herself quite well. I, I've interviewed her maybe 10 or 11 times from New York to Los Angeles, mm -hmm. moderated the debate with Hillary Clinton. She is very much so on top of her game. Well, I, but, didn't, I didn't think anybody thought she was going to lose her composure. But, like but, but let, me, let me just make this point, though. Um, remember the last time around, an upstart out of Illinois came out of nowhere, this African-American that no one thought he could win. I didn't think he could win, being honest with you, and he took the prize from Hillary Clinton. So you never know in the arena of politics what can happen. All right, that's Dominic. I'm Andrew. Richard is on vacation. Up next is Fred, who is calling us from Belmore. And Fred, I understand you have a question to ask in all of this of, of the secretary. Yes, I do. Uh, when she became secretary of state, of course, it wasn't in effect the regulation uh, requiring her to have a governmental account. But when that rule went into effect in 2009, why didn't she comply, number one? Uh, and number two, what penalty uh, did other people have for not complying? And number three, uh, when she says, you know, everything was saved uh, because she sent uh, the emails to people with .gov accounts, didn't she realize that everybody else had a .gov account? Why didn't she? I think those are fair questions, Fred. I think the regulation that you're that you're pointing out, though, went into effect last year. I don't think it was in place in 2009 when she became Secretary of State. There was a reporting requirement where she had to, I think, turn over the emails within 20 days. Instead, she did it in six years. So there is that issue. But those are some those are some questions that are going to be bandied about, and you know, 
conservative media is going to be asking nothing but those questions. Not just conservative media. Fred is on to something here. Those are all valid points yeah. that he just brought up. I'll do you one better, and I'll raise another question, uh, piggybacking off of Fred's response. Do you really believe that the White House did not know that she was using her private email account? I'm sure the President of the United States at some point emails his Secretary of State, Mr. President, you didn't notice that, that it wasn't a .gov account? It's my contention, and maybe I'll be proven wrong, I'm only speculating here, that President Obama wanted her so bad as Secretary of State that these were things that perhaps they negotiated in private. And now everyone's running for cover. Interesting, interesting. Do you think we'd ever learn about that? you think we'd ever find out directly? I, I doubt the there'll be. And one other, I'm glad you just said that, Andrew. One other point that we need to talk about. It's not just Hillary Clinton. Every politician that's worth something now knows do not put it in email. So it's become the standard operation of any government account that you may have to say absolutely nothing of value when it comes to those emails because they know that journalists like me and you, me or you, mm -hmm. or both of us together, <laughs> are going to freedom of information request these documents because we want to see, remember now, remember, and I just want to point this out, I know we have a lot of phone calls waiting, um, the mayor of Detroit, called the hip-hop mayor, Kwame Kilpatrick. Kilpatrick, is in jail tonight as we speak. He, he testified under oath that he was not having an affair with his chief of staff, and the, uh, the BlackBerry documents or some type of electronic email documents were subpoenaed, and the, te the messages between him and his alleged mistress were revealed. Which is why they don't use texts or, or emails as much as they might otherwise. By the way, Huma Abedin, uh, Hillary Clinton's number one go-to person, also was on the private server, was not using a, a .gov email account. Let's go to Robert, who's calling us out of Madison, New Jersey. Robert, what's your take on all of this, uh, the scandal or the non-scandal as it may be, and Clinton's response today? Um, uh, I, I, I really think this is much ado about nothing, okay? I, and obviously, uh, they knew, you know, by the email address that she was on her own private system. So you guys are right discussing that. And the other thing is no phones are secure. I, I mean, even Blackberries can be cracked. So if anybody thinks using, uh, using a phone secure or an email system secure, um, it's, it's just not true. So you're right. Nothing meaningful is going on on these things. I, I, I just don't see what the controversy is here. But, Robert, if, if, if a phone can be cracked, wouldn't that make it a bigger deal in that she should have been using a government phone and using a government email system? Wouldn't it be easier to crack a privately held server or a privately held account? Uh, might be a little bit easier, but any of them can be cracked. I have, you know... Uh, been subjected to that myself. Um, and, and the other thing is, onto most phones, there's software that can be loaded uh, to get into them. Even a BlackBerry that everybody thinks is so secure can be broken. Yeah. All right, Robert, thank you for the call. The, the other thought that keeps coming to mind, and, and I know we have to wrap up this segment, so many people carry two phones. So many people carry a personal phone and a work phone. I have a work phone. I never do any personal work on it. I have a personal phone. I occasionally do some work on it. But it's the concept, I think, is easy for people to understand. Why not just carry two phones? I hear you, yeah. but this plays right into all the negative raps of the Clinton. Very quickly, I still think she's the Democratic nominee if she runs. Do you? She stumbled. Uh, th this is definitely a stumble. As of right now, she's the nominee. Does it hurt it her depends. in a general? No, but you already know what the campaign commercials are yeah. going to say. Yeah. I mean, th that's a given. The question is, is there a smoking gun out there? When if there is, it could mean the beginning of the end. When the phone rings at 2 in the morning, yes. which phone will it be? Yes. Her personal phone or right. her work phone? Will she tell us? Right. Uh, all right, folks, we have a lot of phone calls that are queued up. Unfortunately, we are out of time, but we want to thank you for calling in and for adding your voice to this. You can also go to our Facebook page or our Twitter page and let your opinion be known there to continue the conversation. Up next, Vice President Joe Biden is blasting 47 Republican senators who he says are undermining President Obama. This after they penned a letter to Iranian leaders urging them not to go through with a deal with the president. 
After the break, we'll hear what freshman Republican Congressman Lee Zeldin is on the Foreign Affairs Committee has to say. We'll be right back.